Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Now, today I'm going to give you some tips on how you can optimize the performance of Le Mans Ultimate on your PC, as well as how to set up your triple monitors for the game and get other accessories like Crew Chief and Sib Hub working on it. So starting off with our graphics settings, now as a reference, our PC specs are an RTX 3080 GPU with an Intel i9-10900K processor, as well as 32GB of RAM. Now we're running the game at triple 1440p resolution, so 7680 by 1440 and we're getting between 70 to 80 FPS in multiplayer lobbies and around 60 to 80 FPS in single player, depending on the track and how many classes we run in the race. Now I found that for some reason running the game in windowed mode and having vertical sync turned on actually improved my frame rate when usually I found those settings would reduce my performance in other games. Post effects are set to high, but reducing this setting can give you big performance boosts so play with each level and see if that helps you. FSAA is set to two times and FXAA is set to off. Now the most important visuals that we see whilst we're driving being circuit, texture, player and opponent detail are all set to high and ultra respectively. Texture filter we've got at four times anisotropic. Special effects and shadows are set to medium. Shadow blur optimal and then particles, raindrops and road effects are set to low. Environmental reflection is set to high but if you don't care so much about that finer level of detail you can just put this down to low. Visible vehicles is set to 15 by default. Now lowering this can help you a lot in multiplayer but you might find it doesn't help as much in single player since the AI processing uses up a lot of RAM and CPU anyway. And last up, TV displays are turned off as I don't really notice those things whilst driving. Now here's how we found we could optimize our performance in Le Mans Ultimate outside of the in-game settings. First off is running it as an administrator. Now to do this through Steam, first go into Steam and right click on Le Mans Ultimate. Go to Manage and then Browse Local Files. Go to Launcher, then right click on the LMU Launcher and click Properties. Then go to the compatibility tab and make sure run this program as an administrator is ticked. Then click apply. Next we can alter some hidden settings in the Le Mans Ultimate folder that have carried over from R Factor 2. Go back into the folder and go to user data. Click player. Then open the settings file. Now in the file search for record replays and change this number to zero which means off. Then change record to memory to true. Just remember this will turn off the live replay feature in game, so if you ever do want to record replays in the future, you'll need to come back here and change record replays back to 1. Now this setting can improve performance a lot and it's the rear view back clip, which is basically another term for the draw distance in other simulators. What this does is tell the game to stop rendering images that are a certain distance away from the back of your car, which takes a lot of stress off the GPU. Now by default it's set to off, so the game's rendering everything behind your car as far as it can see. But I found that reducing this number to 175 meters gives me all the information that I need to know behind my car, and then anything after that disappears. Of course you can play around with the value and see what distance you're happy with setting it to. Now the last setting that helps is pit crew detail level. Setting it to 1 causes only your own pit crew to be rendered, which helps reduce frame rate drops whenever you drive past the pit lane during races. Now like I've said before, I mainly play multiplayer and these settings have been really good for me, but I've found that in single player you might need to reduce some of your settings in game a bit more depending on what track and how many car classes you're running. The issue here is that we can't yet customize how many cars from each class are on the grid in a race, which means that on some tracks like Le Mans and Spa, the game is trying to render and control the behavior of over 40 cars, which really digs into your RAM and CPU. Now obviously we're running the game at triple 1440p which is fairly resource intensive. So if you're running the game on a single screen then you'll probably be fine with these settings. When I tested a big 3 class race at Le Mans I was getting just on 65 FPS which is just what I would call a playable experience. But again try these settings out for yourself and make whatever further changes you need to. Now on to setting up our triple screens. So the first thing we need to do in game is make sure our correct triple screen resolution is set in the graphics menu, then make sure multi view is turned on. Then we go back into the Le Mans Ultimate game folder, go to user data, then open the config DX11 file. Now all we need to do here is make sure custom vid res is the same value as our triple screen resolution, in our case 7680 by 1440, then save the file. Now back in the game, in the control settings, go to the interaction tab, look for the triples tires control option and bind that to whatever key you like. Now head into a practice session on any track and drive your car near some kind of railing, I used Fuji for this. 
Now push the control key and whatever key you bound tires triples option to, then this little orange box should pop up. So this is where we input the dimensions for our monitors into. Now click on the main tab once and it should set it so that all three of your monitors are using the same dimensions. To find the dimensions of your monitors, they'll usually be in the manufacturer spec sheet or on the box somewhere. Now this tool measures your monitors in meters. So for example, my monitor's width is 696 millimeters. So we'd enter that value as 0.696 here. The eye value is the distance of your eyes from your middle monitor. So again, just measure whatever that distance is and input it in meters. So for example, 55 centimeters would be 0.550. The angle value is whatever the inside angle of your monitor is set to. So for example, my side monitors are set at an angle of about 40 degrees on the inside. So I entered 40 into that box. The gap value is the thickness of the bezels on the monitors. So for example, if your monitor's bezel thickness is 3 millimeters, then you'd make that value 0.003. It's different, however, if you have the bezel free kits installed on your monitors. Now, naturally, you'd set that value to zero since you've essentially removed your bezels. But I ran into some issues doing this, and here's how I fixed them. Click the middle tab again to customize all three monitors individually. Now, as you can see in the footage, things still aren't lined up perfectly. And I found that part of the image that's right in the middle of the bezel free kit is being eaten up or hidden, as you can see when we pass this 150 meter board. Now the fix for these problems is fairly simple and first we want to fix that issue in the middle of the bezel kit and then fix the alignment if it's still required. So park your car so that the middle of the kit is right on top of something like a flag post or sign. Then in the gap section of your right monitor, just slowly keep reducing the value with the minus button until the image more or less looks smooth and there's no details in the object missing. For me, negative six did the trick. Things already look a bit better, but now we've got the issue where part of the railing on the right side of the screen is a bit bigger than the railing on the middle monitor. Now all we need to do to fix this is increase the height value of our right side monitor by one click at a time until things match up. The rule here is that increasing the height value compresses the image and decreasing the value expands it. Just remember you should only need a few clicks up or down here, and if it's still not fixing the problem then you probably haven't aligned your monitors correctly enough. Do the same if you need to with the left side monitor values and now with those changes our triple screens are lined up pretty much spot on. Now let's take a look at the force feedback settings for our Fanatec DD1. First off in the Fanalab software we have the following. Sensitivity is set to auto. Force feedback strength is set to 50 which is about 8 to 9 newton meters on the DD1. Force feedback scale linear. Natural damper 16. Natural friction 2. Natural inertia 8. Interpolation filter is set to 5, intensity 100, then force, spring and damper effects are all set to 100. Now in the game settings, go to controls and make sure wheel and pedals is selected. Go to the calibrate tab. Now make sure use steering wheel range from vehicle and use steering wheel range maximum rotation from driver are set to on. All of these head movement settings are set to zero and off as I find these effects to be too jarring whilst driving. Now go to the force feedback tab. Make sure force feedback effects is turned on. Now I know a lot of Simicube users have had to turn invert force feedback on. However, with the Fanatec DD1, having it off was fine. With steering torque capability, you need to set that value to match whatever strength you're running your wheelbase at. So for example, with our Fanalab settings, we're running it at about eight to nine Newton meters. So we set that value to nine here. Force feedback smoothing can help reduce any grainy feeling if you're experiencing that in your wheelbase but it can also lose you some detail, so don't put it up too high. Then bump stop degrees is set to 49 and minimum steering torque is zero. Last up in the advanced force feedback section, all of these are set to their defaults. However, I did lower the collision strength to 80% just so that I don't get too much force if I'm involved in a crash. Okay, next let's get SimHub working. Now at the moment, Le Mans Ultimate is technically supported by SimHub, but that's only because it shares the same game engine and telemetry data as R-Factor 2. So first, make sure you've got the latest version of SimHub, version 9.2.3. In the dashboard, find Le Mans Ultimate in the Games menu. Click Game Telemetry Config. Now, even though it might say the game is set up properly, I've seen a lot of people who have had the issue where it's still not working, so we need to configure it manually. Click Open Instructions. This will open up a folder in the SimHub files. Click Bind64, Plugins, and then copy this file called rfactor2 shared memory map plugin. Now go into your Le Mans Ultimate game files, click plugins, then paste the file in here. 
Now there's one thing left to do, so again in the Lamont Ultimate game files, go to user data, click player, then open the custom plugin variables file. Now all that text that I've highlighted here won't be in your file, so what I'll do is leave a link to it in our Discord so you can just copy paste this text into that file. Save it, and then SimHub should now be compatible with Lamont Ultimate. Okay, last up, let's get Crew Chief working. So in the Crew Chief official Discord channel, there's a beta version available that you can download for free. Again, I'll leave a link to it in the description. Now, once you've installed it, find Lamont Ultimate in the game drop-down menu. Now, the first time you try to run it, it'll ask you to install a plugin in the Lamont Ultimate game files. So click OK. Then you just need to locate your Lamont Ultimate game file in this directory box. So for me, it's eDrive, Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Click the Lamont Ultimate file and then click OK. And now Crew Chief should work with the game. Okay, so that was everything guys and hopefully something in this video helps you out. The thing to remember here though is that since Lamont Ultimate is in early access, a lot of this could change in the coming months. So you might find that some of these options or optimizations, particularly in the graphics section, might become a little outdated or unnecessary. So keep an eye out for that. So far I'm really enjoying the game, especially the multiplayer, but I'll be the first to admit that it's definitely not perfect straight out of the box. But hopefully there's something here that I've showed you today which helps you make that experience a little better for you. Now if there's some settings or optimizations that you found made your experience better that I haven't mentioned in this video, be sure to leave them in the comments because it'd be great if we could all help each other out and share that knowledge with everybody. But that's all we have time for today guys, thanks as always for watching, I'll see you in the next one.